So we are going to talk about something called the Ronskian determinant in differential equations. Now the purpose of the Ronskian determinant is to check for something called linear independence. And this is something that we talked about a little bit in the video about repeated roots. But what linear independence means is that if we have two functions, f of x and g of x, they are linearly independent if they are not constant multiples of each other. So for example, if f of x were equal to x and g of x were x squared, well, x is not equal to something like just a half of x squared for every value of x. And therefore, these are linearly independent. But if instead we had x and then 3x, these would not be linearly independent. The reason this is important in differential equations is that we know a homogeneous differential equation must have a certain number of linearly independent solutions. For example, if we have y double prime plus 3y prime plus y equals 0, this is a homogeneous differential equation and it is second order. What that means is that this must have, because of this double prime, two linearly independent solutions. So the goal of the Ronskian determinant is that once we get our solutions, we want to check that they are linearly independent like we want them to be. Now in order to get an idea of this in higher order cases, we also have to talk about how linear independence works when we have more than two functions. If we have f of x, g of x, and h of x, we say that f of x, g of x, and h of x are linearly independent if there's no way to add up constant multiples of all of them and get to zero, unless we just make all of them zero. So we'll take a look at functions that are linearly dependent as an example. If f of x is equal to sine squared x, g of x is equal to cosine squared x, and h of x is equal to 3, these functions are not linearly independent because we can do 3 sine squared x plus 3 cosine squared x, and then minus 3, and this equals 0 for every value of x. So these functions are not linearly independent. If instead we had sine squared of x, cosine squared of x, and x, now there's no way to add up constant multiples of these functions and get 0. So we say they're linearly independent. Our goal in this video is to come up with a way to decide whether functions are linearly independent or not. Is there any other idea that has to do with linear independence? Maybe not even in differential equations, but in other areas. And the answer is yes, it is the determinant of a matrix. Now if you watched my Learning Linear Algebra series, or you can check the video in the description, I talked about how the determinant of a matrix A has to do with whether its column vectors are linearly independent. So for example, if we had the determinant of 1, 2, 2, 4, notice 2, 4 is a constant multiple of 1, 2. So these column vectors are linearly dependent. Because of that, this determinant is always going to be equal to 0. Now we talked a lot about determinants in terms of numbers. But what if instead we had the determinant of functions? For example, if we had 1x to 2x, well, these column vectors are also linearly dependent. And therefore, their determinant will equal 0. So maybe we want to start thinking about plugging functions into this determinant here. And whether their determinant is 0 will give us some information about whether they're linearly independent or not. In order to do that, we're going to have to figure out how we can take the determinant of a bunch of functions. So say we want to look at 3, f of x, g of x, and h of x. So if we want to do that, we'll need a 3 by 3 determinant, because determinants only work for square matrices. So maybe we might think, well, let's put f of x here, g of x here, and h of x here. If they're linearly dependent, then maybe we'll get 0 as a result. But now we have a problem. We need to fill in 
the rest of these entries in the matrix. But what happens if we do something like f of x, f of x, f of x, and then g of x, g of x, g of x, and we fill in the whole matrix like this, well, we have another problem, which is now these column vectors actually are linearly dependent. And it's not because f, g, and h are linearly dependent, but it's because we could write any of these columns as the same vector. For example, let's look at g of x. This second column here, we could write as g of x times the vector 1, 1, 1. But we could also write this first column as f of x times 1, 1, 1. Same for the third column. So there is a way to add up these column vectors and get to zero, as long as we're allowed to use functions. So that's not going to work. We're going to need something a little different. We're going to have to be clever. We can't have f, f, f down the columns. We need something different. And we can't make it f, 2f, 3f, because then we'll also need g, 2g, 3g, and so we're going to have the same problem. Is there some way that we can take the function f and modify it in a way that's different from the way we modify a g? And the answer is yes. It's going to come through a little bit of trickery. We can't use constant multiples, but we have to apply the same operation to all three functions and somehow get different results coming out. The answer to how we do that is differentiation. If we take f, f prime, and then f double prime, remember these functions might be constant multiples of each other, but if f, g, and h are different, they're going to behave differently when they're differentiated. So h, h prime, h double prime is going to look very different from f, f prime, f double prime. For example, if f of x were equal to x squared, then differentiating gives us 2x, and then differentiating again gives us 2. On the other hand, if g of x is x cubed, then we'll have 3x squared, and then 6x. So notice in this case, the effect of differentiating is different. We have 1, 2, 2 down here, but then 1, 3, 6 on the second column. So we've solved our problem of these columns all being the same by using the derivative. And now we can take a look at this determinant and say, what happens if this determinant is not equal to 0? Well, if this determinant is not equal to 0, then we know the column vectors must not be linearly dependent. They must be linearly independent. And therefore, taking this determinant for three functions, f, g, and h, is a way for us to decide whether these functions are linearly independent or not. As long as this determinant isn't 0, we know that they must be linearly independent. And we can extend this idea to however many functions we want. If we wanted to add some other function, maybe we call it m of x, all we would have to do is turn this 3 by 3 matrix into a 4 by 4 matrix, and then have the third derivative down here as well. Again, if it's not equal to 0, then they're all linearly independent. Now, the last thing we're going to do here is talk about a couple limitations of the Ronskian determinant. One of those is we've talked about how if it's not equal to 0, we know these functions are independent. But sometimes it's equal to 0, even though the functions are linearly independent. For example, if we take f of x equal to the absolute value of x and g of x equal to x, these are clearly two different functions. The absolute value goes down and then up, but x just goes straight up. However, if we differentiate the absolute value of x, the result that we get is the absolute value of x divided by x. And if we have g of x equal to x, and we differentiate that, we get 1. If you take this determinant, you'll find that it equals 0, even though the functions are linearly independent. And what that means is that if the determinant equals 0, we cannot conclude whether the functions are linearly independent or not. However, the Ronskian is still a very powerful tool for determining whether functions are linearly independent. If we're solving a differential equation and we get three solutions, we can always use this to check whether our answers are linearly independent. Differentiate those functions, put them in the square determinant, 
If it's not equal to zero, we know we found all the solutions that we need.